On Wednesday, the 3rd of March 2021, 33-year-old Sarah Everard would leave her home to make her way towards a friend's house located on Leithwaite Road in Clapham. She stops by the Sainsbury supermarket located in Brixton Hill, South West London on the way to purchase some wine. She then leaves and continues her journey towards the property. At around 9.15pm, CCTV captures Sarah walking along Clapham Common Westside Junction with Bowood Road after leaving her friend's house, where she's seen talking to her boyfriend on the phone, making plans to meet the next evening. Nothing alarming. After making roughly a one and a half mile journey, she's picked up once again, this time on Cavendish Road. What she didn't know though, was that only moments later, would be the last time anyone would see her alive. A few hours prior, at around 4.47pm, active duty Metropolitan Police Officer Wayne Cousins is spotted on CCTV at Enterprise rent -a car where he rents out a Vauxhall Crossland. Wayne was an armed officer in the Met's elite Parliamentary and Diplomatic Protection Group. These officers are an armed unit responsible for guarding the parliamentary estate, including Downing Street and the Palace of Westminster, as well as the embassies plotted around London. As of March 2021, he himself, Wayne Cousins, was posted at the US Embassy, and having clocked off at his shift on March 3rd at around 7am, he presumably would go home and then a few hours later would pick up his rented vehicle ready to act out on what's believed to be a cold and calculated plan to use his authority in order to kidnap, rape and murder a young woman. This plan of his had been weeks in the making. On February 10th, 2021, he brought a quote police standard issue handcuff key with double locking pin, and then of course books the hire car out on the 28th of February. Only moments after this, it's believed he purchased a 600mm by 100mm roll of self-adhesive film from Amazon 
to use in his attack. It's not exactly known what this was used for though. A few days later, ready to act upon his plan, he makes one final trip to the Tesco Superstore located in Kensington at around 8pm. Here he purchases a pack of 14 hairbands, which were said to have been a significant purchase and part of his plans. One theory is that he used these to keep up an erection. After leaving the Tesco Superstore, it's thought that Wayne was now ready to act out on his plan. So he goes searching for potential victims, young women. But of course, that came with its issues on a busy street. Not necessarily for Wayne though. At 9.32pm, exactly 5 minutes after Sarah was spotted on Cavendish Road, Wayne is picked up on the same road in his hire car, hunting down potential victims. Sarah's seen here at the same time, just up the road a bit more on the junction with Cavendish Road and Poinders Road. Two minutes later though, Sarah becomes the victim and she's never seen alive ever again. Compliant is how a witness described Sarah in her last moments alive after being falsely detained by Wayne after he used the coronavirus laws to his favour. This is how he managed to kidnap her off the streets in front of people and they were none the wiser. After being handcuffed, she was placed in the rear of the vehicle and the pair set off on an 80 mile trip back towards Kent. CCTV, which hasn't been given to the press, captures the pair at around 11.43pm on North Military Road. Here, Wayne is believed to have transferred Sarah to his own vehicle. She's seen alive, but we can't begin to understand the panic and duress she must have been under at that point. Roughly 10 minutes later, cell sites place Wayne in the Sibberswold area, which he knew well. Between 11.53pm and 12.57am the following morning, it's believed that he raped her before proceeding to strangle her with his police-issued belt, which ultimately led to her death. After this had went down, he would return to Dover at around 1am. What I find disturbing about this case though is Wayne's footsteps after the kidnap, rape and murder had taken place. You see, only one and a half hours after he committed this hideous crime, he was captured on CCTV purchasing two bottles of water, an apple juice, a Lucasade orange and a carrier bag from BP Dover South Services. Very calm indeed and doesn't seem to have a care in the world. Not the way you'd expect someone to act after falsely kidnapping, raping and killing an innocent woman. Wayne would then travel to Hodes Wood near Ashford, Kent. You see, he owned an area of woodland here and once arriving, he placed Sarah in a refrigerator before leaving and making his way back to North Military Road in Dover where he switches back to the rental car once again. Shortly after, he would be picked up on CCTV purchasing a hot chocolate and a Bakewell tart from Costa Coffee before returning the hire car roughly 15 minutes later. From here, he drives to Sandwich, located in Kent, to destroy Sarah's phone by throwing it in a river.
Wayne lived at home with his wife and two children. He had told them that on the evening of the 3rd of March, he was going to go to work, the usual. They, of course, were none the wiser, but Wayne had planned this plot to a T that when he arrived home in the morning of the 4th, it coincided with him having worked the normal night shift. When arriving, he acted at home and elsewhere entirely as normal, as evidenced by such details as booking dental appointments for his children. During the morning of the 5th of March 2021, Wayne headed over to a BP petrol station where he purchased a jerry can full of petrol. From here, Wayne headed to a McDonald's to buy an extra large value meal at the drive through and then made his way back to the woodland, which was owned by him, to douse Sarah in fuel and set fire to her body. Shortly after, he makes this call. Hey, yeah, I was wondering if I could book my um, dog in for the, uh, for the vet so I can have a discussion about her issues, please. It's Cousins, C-O-U-Z-E-N-S. is Maddie. That's the one. Uh, no, 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 that's fine. Um, I, I work shift work, so either, um, let me think. Um, but, but would it be possible the Friday the twelfth? Um, sometime after half past three. That would be brilliant. Yep, no, that's fine. Um, she well, we think she's suffering from like separation anxiety. And we have tried absolutely everything. We've tried sort of like to give her puzzles and, and bits and pieces, we treat puzzles and everything. We take her for walks every single day. Um, but we've been told, I've, I've got a camera set up as well, but we've been told reliably by our neighbours, um, so we know there's issues, that, and she just barks and howls constantly all day. But obviously, when we're there. Um, and then when we come home, she's like so excited and worked up that she kind of wheezes and, um, she's shaking, um, but where she jumps up and she's got longer claws, she like scratches the kids, she scratches us. Um, not all by accident, but we're just wondering. We have read online about yeah. if it gets to a like a no, quite a, a bad degree of separation anxiety, then potential medication like try and calm her down. So that's what we want to talk to the vet about, really, and a, a way forward with it. Yep. Okay. That would be really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Continuing the execution of his plan, he heads over to B&Q in order to pick up some builder's bags before returning to the woods.
Her remains were put into these builders' bags and transferred to a nearby pond within the woodland. Her body would eventually be found there by police. By the time the Saturday had came around, so this would be three days after the incident had went down, Wayne invented an excuse in an email to his supervisor to avoid firearms duties and remain away from work. The details aren't exactly clear, but all we do know is that he didn't go into work on that Saturday, I don't believe he was working on that Saturday anyway, and took his own children back to the site where he'd set fire to Sarah's body, allowing them to play in that exact area. In due course, he cleaned the exterior of his car, and when he's supposed to return back to work on the Monday, the 8th, he calls in sick and doesn't make an appearance. The following day on the 9th, and with the plan still continuing on, Wayne decides to wipe the data from his phone. Only some 40 minutes later, and after the evidence pointed towards Wayne being the main suspect, his old colleagues decided to pay him a visit. Right. My name's... Do you want to take this off? Yeah. Is that alright? Yeah? Are you like on the stuff? No. You sure? Yeah. Okay. It's just going to be easier to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. We've got to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. This is Annie. Annie Kirsch is also And um, Marcus Sanders. Okay. So we're here to talk to you about Sarah. I'm going to show you a picture. Do you know Sarah? I don't know. Okay. Sarah went missing. Um, I'll show you some pictures of, of, of her on the day. Okay. Sarah went missing um, on Wednesday. And her parents, obviously, and her family are really worried about her now. The inquiry that's been conducted so far has led us to come and speak to you about it and to see what we, what we know about Sarah, okay? So, would you like to... Do you know where Sarah is? No. Right. Okay. Do you know anything about what happened to her? I know that um, she went missing up in um, London somewhere um, what, what, about a week ago or so, uh, just from what I've got on the news. Okay. Have you ever personally met her? No, not personally, man. No. You had any interactions with her at all? No, why would what, what, what I have personal interactions with her? <coughs> well, it's very difficult because I can't go into a lot of the evidence because obviously that would require, that's not part of what an urgent interview is okay this interview is just about trying to find her because sure. she's been missing for a while well, I'm, now i'm sat in handcuffs and <coughs> me, well, i know her so you must have something to say that i, I know her well i said you've been arrested on suspicion of kidnap and we believe that you've been involved in her disappearance and taking her away from her family okay so we are trying to find her Obviously, everybody is very worried about her. She's got, you know, parents. She's got, a, a, you know, she's siblings. She's got a boyfriend. There's a lot of people that care about her. Um, sure. If you've sure. seen her on the news, there's a lot of people that, you know, reach out about her. Sure. Out there looking for her every day, and she's missing. And it's our job, our primary job here, is to find her and to try and find her safe and well. Okay. Now we believe it. Do you know something about where she is? And that's why we're here, to look for her and to try and find her. And that's why we're talking to you now, is to try and get you to have a good think about it. And, you know, tell us anything you can about where we might be able to find her. Okay, um, well, I am in financial. Um, and I've been um, lent on by... Um, I don't know who they are. They're a group, a gang, whatever. Um, and they told me why I need to go and pick up girls and give them to them. So um, I said, not happening. Um, and it then came through that they're going to harm my family, take them away, and they'll use them instead. Um, at that point I had no option to try and find somebody so I don't um, there's, there's a couple of names I was told a place to um, take her that's it, that's all, that is all I know <coughs> and 
to this group of people. Tell me about them. I need to find them. Tell me everything you know that I okay. think that you'll help me. There was a white sprinter van. Um, they um, are it was between sort of Lennon, Maidstone area that I've got to off. Um, I still don't know. I, I, I don't know. They, they just, I, I just um, parked my car up and then the van come up behind me, flashed me, and they all jumped out. Um, and then they, they, they took this girl. Uh, um, they said, they said, you've done good. And I don't know whether my family's going to be alright still. But they, they threatened, they threatened to take my family away from me. So, at that point, I'm, I'm doing what I can to protect my family. That's it. So, all I know is that it was a roundabout. I, we could try there now, I could show you. But I, 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 roughly, I don't know. Lenham Maidstone area of it all. Um, if you did it on Google, if you did it on Google Maps, like Google Earth, if you drove it, would right. you get to do it? I drove from Ashford to Maidstone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a roundabout that breaks up, I guess. So this, this is the first big roundabout. You come to, and you would carry straight over to Maidstone, but instead I went round that roundabout and back up another road. Um, and at that point, that I was flashed and pulled over. Um, <coughs> you guys got out, um, opened my door, opened that door, um, pushed me out against the front of the car, took the girl, drove off. That's it. They said we'll be in touch. So I'm here, I'm off work with stress because I'm here to protect my family. I want to be here 24 seven for my family. They come from my family. I've got nothing myself. I've got no choice. I'll go back through the route with you in a minute, all right? But how do they contact you? How did you contact them? I tried to film one of their cool girls and rip her off. Mm -hmm. So she's told them and, um, they, they, they've got me. So, how do they? No, but what I mean, how do they contact you? How how is it they've been in contact with you to make these threats? They just they just tell me be here, be here. So hotel Burston down in Folkestone, got be here. Okay, so I turned up. Um, I've got, I've got no mobile number, and they have got my mobile number. They have. They're obviously outside watching, following. I uh, just honestly. How are they telling you to be there? They'll be there. How is it they're leaving those directions? Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. They'll, they'll come outside. So they'll be outside here. Yeah. And then they'll say, right, well, yeah. you're going to be in Folkestone at uh, this time, or you're going to be in Ashford at this time. And that's it. Okay. There's no links, no telephone numbers. I'm completely on my own, but at the same time being threatened. Um, it had um, Romanian plates on the, on the van. Um, uh, white, um, like Mercedes Sprinter type van. There's a transporter, um, a blue. Wayne would go on to give a false account in where he pretended that for two or three weeks he'd been acting under the coercion of a gang from one of the Balkan countries who compelled him to abduct girls who he then handed over, suggesting Sarah Everard was one of them, who was alive when doing so. He even went on to further give police statements saying that he was made the victim of threats which made him concerned for his family's safety, hence why he had to go out and do what he did. But after the evidence was put against him, he was banged to rights and at that point he would eventually plead guilty to all the charges that were brought against him over the following months. After a recent sentencing hearing, Wayne Cousins was handed a life order sentence, which is fairly rare in the UK, and that means he'll never have the chance to be released from prison. After the details of the case came out about how someone in a trusted position of authority could commit such crimes, the Metropolitan Police was faced with huge public backlash. And this case has most definitely damaged 
police public relations. How could a man who was nicknamed the rapist by colleagues for making women co-workers uncomfortable not be investigated internally by fellow officers? Why wasn't Wayne's past looked into when hiring him for the Metropolitan Police? In 2015, a complaint was made about him after he was spotted driving naked from the waist down in a car. Even in February of 2021, just days before Sarah was murdered, Wayne had another complaint about indecent exposure against him in relation to something that happened in a McDonald's, but the details surrounding that incident haven't been made public as of yet. If all of these things had been looked into properly, would it have changed Wayne's position? Well, that's up for debate, but there's always that slight chance he would have never been in the position he was if these things had been looked into properly. For now though, Wayne's in jail for the rest of his life, and he's currently under investigation for multiple other missing persons cases because, and I do firmly believe this, this isn't the first time Wayne Cousins has committed these types of crimes.